guitar bazaar. Hey, we're going to wind a P90 because we couldn't find anything that shows the process. So we're going to try and go start to finish. One of the first things you want to do is get your bobbin. And I've got some sanding cloth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edges of that bobbin. Because all it takes is one little burr. Wherever you got your bobbin, they're probably good. But that one little burr that catches the wire is going to cause you to have a bad day. So what you want to do is go around that bobbin with the paste, that sandpaper or sanding cloth, you know, emery cloth, whatever you use. Get both sides and just kind of scuff through it. Make sure there aren't any sharp edges that are going to catch that wire. And I just felt one. So they are there. These bobbins sometimes get bounced around and marked up. You've got a little hole there. You've got, you know, right there you've got a mark where it was uh, molded. That little sharp edge will cause you to blues. So try to sand those edges off as best you can. And as you can see, I'm spending some time to get what I think is a bird that's going to bother me later. I'll get it now. It's not something I want to deal with later. I'd rather go smoothly, get the burrs off. Okay, we've got the burrs off. Next thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the bobbin, and you've got a side with a little hole on these. These are the 50s style bobbins. You see the little ridge, and that the wires will come through. We'll show you that later. And this would be the top of the bobbin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place it down with the bobbin side up, and we've got a roll of poly wire right here. And this wire is really thin, so one thing you want to have if your eyes are like mine is a good set of reading glasses, quite strong. And make sure you have good lighting. One of the things that I've done, and I'm, I'm sure that a million people have their own way of doing this, and I'm not going to stand here and say whose way is better. All I'm going to say is I didn't find anything showing how to do this, so I'm going to show you how to do it. And I'm going to show you the way that I'm doing it. Is it the best way? Hey, I don't know, but it works for me. Well, I hope it works for you. What I'm going to do is kind of bunch up a little bit of this wire. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to have a little bit of wire to work with at the end. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to place it on the bottom of the bobbin like that. And as you can see, I've got it sticking out. I'm going to make sure nothing's sticking out. As I bunch all this wire up, it's not going to be easy. You're going to have to look and bunch it up and not break it because it's very easy to break. And what I've done is I've got a couple of pieces of tape, pickup tape, that I stuck to the side here because I knew I needed them. I was going to tape that to the bottom of the bobbin. This is my method of doing it, whether it's the best. And I know I'm going to get people going to say, well, I do it differently and my way is better. Hey, that's really great. Appreciate that, you know, that's fantastic, but this is the way I do it. So what we're going to do is mount the bobbin. So now that you've got it taped on there, I'm going to pass that up and put it in the center. Maybe I'll put a wind or two around it, and I'll hold it with my thumb. And I'm going to take this roll of wire, and I'm going to set it down on the floor so that it's out of my way, and I'm not going to break it, because that wire will break. So you can see it feeds. Now I'm going to take the screw on the machine. Sometimes they're tight and you've got to screw them. I've seen people say, well, I'll just drill a hole in the bobbin bigger. That'll work real well when later you try to put your pole pieces in. So screw them in if possible. And what we're going to do is screw these in and bring the bobbin close in. So now we've got the bobbin on there and what we're going to do is put this guard on this particular machine there's a guard, this is the Bojo Tone machine uh, which is a very nice machine and I'm happy with it I'm going to put that guard and we're making sure that the pickup is pretty much lined up and balanced towards the center now what I've already done is line up and we'll move the wire out of the way for a minute a ruler, what you want to do is put it along the side of that bobbin and make sure that this hole lines up. If your bobbin comes to here and your hand is winding over here, 
well, you're going to be winding to the spool. So you want to make sure that this sends the wire right onto the bobbin. And in this particular case, we've already set this with the little Allen wrench. Different winder is going to be different. So if you hold the wire and you were to be able to turn it, it would not catch on the edges. And we'll go to the other edge and we'll make sure that we're not catching. Now, we're ready to wind. And what we're going to do, I'm going to turn that machine on and you can't see that, but we are going to program it to wind in a forward direction, a clockwise direction. And we're going to set the amount of turns of wire, how many wraps of wire we want on this P90 pickup. And I've got my finger on the button and we're slowly going up to about 10,000 winds on this P90. And that should give us a good, you know, reading when we're done. I'm actually getting pretty good at judging, but you want to keep a pad with you. You know, you wind a pickup and it's just perfect. Write down how many winds you put on it. Because that's going to be important the next time, oh, I wound that pickup and that pickup was there. It was perfect. How many winds did I put on that pickup? That's going to be important later to figure and rewind what you want. The Mojo Tone machine actually has presets. So I've actually set this to 10,300 winds. Okay, and what I'm going to do is make sure I'm ready to wind it. I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to grasp that wire between my thumb and index finger. And I like to wrap it over that finger there and put that finger down. So we'll just grab it like this. Do not squeeze the heck out of that wire. It's very, very thin. It will break and you'll start all over. Hopefully that doesn't happen to me here because I'm paying more attention to talking than doing what I do. So I'm going to get this to where she's ready and I'm going to put slight tension on it and I'm going to start the machine. And the machine's going to start spinning. And I'll take a few winds going back and forth if you'll notice I'm moving the wire. And I'm going to stop it so you can see that that wire is winding on the coil. We're going to, if we can't speed it up, don't, don't go too hot fast at first. Right now the machine set at about 39. I'm going to move that up because I'm a little more used to it than the next guy. And I'm going to wind it at 60, which is pretty fast. I'm going back and forth with the wire, keeping slight tension on it. What I'm going to do is stop the machine, and I'm going to turn the camera off while I wind it. We'll be back in a second, because we don't need to sit through a million to one wind. Okay, so you thought we missed that, and you couldn't see what was going on. Here's the bobbin that we screwed the two screws through. Here's the guide that I just spoke of, and you couldn't see it. You notice the bobbin is centered, and then what we're going to do is put these lock screws on. And that will securely hold the bobbin to the machine. You don't want it flying off as you're winding. This particular machine is a little bit on the pricey side, but it does work well. You can find it online. We're not showing anybody's proprietary information. Now as far as using the ruler, you've got these two, this space between these two spaces. You're going to line the ruler up and basically line it up with that side and then line that side bobbing up with that side. Now we did this quick so hopefully it doesn't backfire, but on this machine you know you'd loosen it with an Allen wrench moving either way. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that as I'm going back and forth down here, there's tension that I'm putting on it, but I'm going back and forth and guiding the wire onto that bobbin. And we, you couldn't see that before, so let's see if we can't pretty much get a few winds under our belt. You can see what happens. I'll see if I can't wind a couple hundred for you. And what I've done is program the machine
and now I'm going to turn it on. You'll see the bob and, bob and spin as I move the wire back and forth. Now we're going to just wind 600 wines real quick and let you watch what happens. Because we didn't do that earlier, you couldn't see the whole situation. But this will give you a little bit of an idea. And I, I think we should be able to see what's happening there. The wire is wound to the bobbin. Now you saw what's happening up there. The other thing, take it off, we'll move to the next step. Okay, we've got, so we've got it wound. Um, the next thing I like to do is to turn it up and I'm going to take one little piece of tape that I've got ready and I'm going to tape that wire. Actually, I'm going to turn it so I can see to tape that wire, right? And what I'm trying to do here is just to stop that wire from, you know, popping off there and unwinding and it just makes it a little bit easier for me anyway, so people might not do this, so might. Now, we're good. I'm going to break the wire right here. Um, I'll be back in a second. What we're going to do is we're going to pull the bobbin off, simply unscrew these screws, take the guard off, remove the bobbin. I'm going to move over to my bench and we're going to show you how to complete this P90 pickup. Okay, so now we've got our bobbin got some solder here. We've got a little yellow sticky note there. And what that sticky note's there, so you know, is so that I can work on camera where you can see me and not be working up here where you can't. Okay, what we're going to need now is a base plate. A P90, we've got a dog ear base plate. We've got two A2 magnets designated by the blue stripe. Nice little pair of scissors, a 50 millimeter keeper bar, pickup tape, we've got a bag with the pole pieces that we're going to put down through the top of the pickup. We've got some 28 gauge wire in black and white. We've got a handy little tool that will tell you the orientation of a magnet, if you can see that little... If you don't have one of these, these are readily available online. Just pick up a little compass, and as you can see, that compass will, will definitely work to tell you the orientation of your magnet. We'll get into that in a minute. We've also got some base plate screws to screw the base plate. We have here our trusty soldering iron. Be careful with soldering irons, they get kind of hot, you know. Don't want you to burn yourself if you're a beginner. And what we're going to do is make sure we've got good lighting. We've also got a little lug, by the way. I like. We're going to do this pickup like a 50s pickup. So what I'm going to do is take a lug and kind of get it ready. I'm going to cut the edges off so that it fits where I want it to fit. And you'll see that in just a bit. I'm going to just cut these edges a little closer and by doing that it will fit where I want it to fit and you'll see that in just a bit. Um, this is a little prep work I should have done so I don't take time on the video but it won't take a whole lot of time anyway. Now, one of the things you've got to keep in mind that we did use a poly-coated wire. With a poly-coated wire, and you can see it's sticking off here, where we wound it. I don't know if you can actually see the wire. It's that thin. Okay. Now this wire that I'm holding, and I'm going to get to the end of it. On the end of this wire, because it's poly-coated, you're going to want that coating off the wire. Okay. And one good way to do it with poly wire makes it simple. You could touch your soldering iron to it, and we're not ready to do this, but I'm just going to show you. Touch the soldering iron to it and brush that across the edge of and that wire across that hot solder. And what's going to happen is it's going to melt that off. With poly wire, you can do that. It's great. Now, if you're using plain enamel wire, it's a little different. You're going to have to get sandpaper or some emery cloth and actually 
fold it in half like this and sand the edge of that wire. Trust me, when you use plain enamel wire, it's going to stretch the limits of your patience. I'm actually sanding the coating off that wire. Now, one of the things to remember is the poly wire, the solder and I will take care of it. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to go after this wire on the bottom. This is the beginning of the coil, this is the end. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this coil, I'm going to stand it up, let's stand it this way, I like to work this way a little better. You're going to have your preference. And to make it easy for you guys, I'm going to make my wire lead wires a lot longer than normal, but it's going to be easier for you until you get used to it. Now, I've got the end of the wire, so what I'm going to do, this is poly wire, we don't have to sand. Once again, I'm going to touch it with a solder and iron, get a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron, and I'm going to move the end through. And believe it or not, I can actually see that coating coming off. And after a while, you'll notice that the solder will want to stick to the wire. That tells you that coating's off. And solder goes where solder's been. Keep that in mind. Now, see as that is the end wire, the end of the coil, I'm going to attach a black lead wire, which is going to go through that slot and down under the pickup. And we're actually going to connect it to that. And I'm going to leave these wires long, as you should. Because when you're learning, Long is better than short, okay? That's one thing to keep in mind. A long wire is going to be a lot better to you than a wire that's too short. I'm going to grab my trusty knife, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we've got our bobbin. Got some solder here. We've got a little yellow sticky note there. And what that sticky note's there, so you know, is so that I can work on camera where you can see me and not be working up here where you can't. Okay, what we're going to need now is a base plate. A P90, we've got a dog ear base plate. We've got two A2 magnets designated by the blue stripe. Nice little pair of scissors. A 50 millimeter keeper bar. pickup tape. We've got a bag with the pole pieces that we're going to put down through the top of the pickup. We've got some 28 gauge wire in black and white. We've got a handy little tool that will tell you the orientation of a magnet if you can see that little. If you don't have one of these, these are readily available online. Just pick up a little compass, and as you can see, that compass will, will definitely work to tell you the orientation of your magnet. We'll get into that in a minute. We've also got some base plate screws to screw the base plate. We have here our trusty soldering iron. Be careful with soldering irons, they get kind of hot, you know. Don't want you to burn yourself if you're a beginner. What we're going to do is make sure we've got good lighting. We've also got a little lug, by the way. I like. We're going to do this pickup like a 50s pickup. So what I'm going to do is take a lug and kind of get it ready. I'm going to cut the edges off so that it fits where I want it to fit. And you'll see that in just a bit. I'm going to just cut these edges a little closer. And by doing that, it will fit where I want it to fit. And you'll see that in just a bit. Um, There's a little prep work I should have done so I don't take time on the video, but it won't take a whole lot of time anyway. Now, one of the things you've got to keep in mind that we did use a poly coated wire. With a poly coated wire, and you can see it sticking off here where we wound it. I don't know if you can actually see the wire, it's that thin. Okay, now this wire that I'm holding. And I'm going to get to the end of it. On the end of this wire, because it's poly coated, you're going to want that coating off the wire. Okay? And one good way to do it with poly wire makes it simple. 
You can touch your soldering iron to it, and we're not ready to do this, but I'm just going to show you. Touch the soldering iron to it and brush that across the edge of and that wire across that hot solder. And what's going to happen is it's going to melt that off. With poly wire, you can do that. It's great. Now, if you use a plain enamel wire, it's a little different. You're going to have to get sandpaper or some emery cloth and actually fold it in half like this and sand the edge of that wire. Trust me, when you use plain enamel wire, it's going to stretch the limits of your patience. I'm actually sanding the coating off that wire. Now, one of the things to remember is the poly wire, the solder and I will take care of it. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to go after this wire on the bottom. This is the beginning of the coil, this is the end. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this coil, I'm going to stand it up. Let's stand it this way, I like to work this way a little better. You're going to have your preference. And to make it easy for you guys, I'm going to make my wire lead wires a lot longer than normal. But it's going to be easier for you until you get used to it. Now, I've got the end of the wire, so what I'm going to do, this is poly wire, we don't have to sand. Once again, I'm going to touch it with a solder and iron. Get a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron. I'm going to move the end through. And believe it or not, I can actually see that coating coming off. And after a while, you'll notice that the solder will want to stick to the wire. That tells you that coating's off. And solder goes where solder's been. Keep that in mind. Now, see as that is the end wire, the end of the coil, I'm going to attach a black lead wire, which is going to go through that slot and down under the pickup and we're actually going to connect it to that. And I'm going to leave these wires long as you should because when you're learning long is better than short. Okay, That's one thing to keep in mind. A long wire is going to be a lot better to you than a wire that's too short. I'm going to grab my trusty knife and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back with my trusty knife. What we're going to do, and I know I should use a wire strip over this wire is pretty thin and I'm pretty good at that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to skim it, get the coating off that wire and I'm going to twist it around so it gets, it's not frayed on the ends. I'm going to do both ends. And then one thing that you're going to notice I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tin the end. What I'm going to do is get a little solder on the end of that solder and iron. I'm going to run the end of that wire through there. Because I'll tell you something I learned. Solder goes where solder's been. So if you've got a little solder on the end of that wire, it's going to be easier to solder it together. Now here comes the fun part. We've got a wire that's as thick as a hair and a lot weaker. The hair is actually stronger than this wire. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist them together. And this in itself is going to push the levels of your patients, trust me. Because you're dealing with something that's extremely hard to see and it's even harder to work with. So what I'm going to do, and I'm, I'm busy talking and not really paying attention, so bear with me. I'm going to twist this wire around like this. And I'm going to get them pretty much twisted together. As you can see, I don't know if you can see it, here's the black wire and that gold wire or copper wire is going down. I'm going to take that solder and iron and I'm going to run that through the solder again because solder is going to stay where solder has been and it's going to help those two wires to stay together. Now I'll take the scissors and I'm going to trim it a little short because it's a little longer than I want but I want it to be able to work with it and if I didn't cut it too short you're going to have the wires connected. Now, one sixteenth one sixteenth shrink tube. I'm going to cut a piece and I'm going to take that shrink tube and I'm going to slip it over that black wire very carefully. And I'm trying to move as fast as possible and at the same time let you see what we're doing. As you can see I slipped it over the end. Now I'm not going to put a lighter to that wire so I'm going to lean it up and let the heat 
melt that shrink tube. And now it's connected. So what I'm going to do, it comes off. I'm going to go over here to the end of the pickup. I'm going to get a piece of that pickup tape just to hold it for you. And what I'm going to do is tape that. I don't know if you can see, but we'll show you in a minute what we've got. I'm going to make sure that this comes down. And I'm going to run that piece of tape so it stays out of my way. And a good thing to use is a thicker piece of shrink boot to make sure that that tape's holding it. As you can see, the tape is up a little bit and it'll come up. But for all intent and purposes, it's going to keep it out of our way while we work the other lead, which is the beginning. We bunched it up and we taped it there. Now we're going to pull that tape up. And we're going to try and get that wire off that tape without breaking it. One thing to do is put your finger where it comes into the roll because you don't want to pull on that wire. As you get a little bit off, move your finger. and walk it off. And I know it might be hard for you to see this, but what I'm doing is pulling that wire off that tape. And then what I'm going to do is, is stretch it out as much as possible so that we have no snags, no knots. And, and there's a little knot that developed on the end. I'm going to cut it off. Now, what we want to do is bring this wire around the same way that we did the other one, but we're on the opposite side of the pickup. And I'm going to cut it right at the end for you. And we'll take that little piece of wire and get it out of the way. And what we're going to do once again is we're going to take that wire and we're going to burn off some of that coating so that we get a good contact. Okay, because if you don't get a good contact, the pickup won't work. Because you can't get a signal through poly coating. You can see how the pickup solder stuck right to that wire. And I want to get most of that off. I'm not going to leave it on there. It's make it going to make it extremely hard to work with. So I've got it off there, and I know that I pretty much have contact. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ohm meter. I'm going to unwrap these ugly wires and I'm going to set it at 20K and I'm going to touch the ends of those wires to make sure that my coils work because there's nothing like going through all this work and it doesn't work and as you can see we're at 8.78 wow good hot P90 okay now on the start wire if you remember the end wire we used black on the start of the coil I'm going to use white and once again I'm going to cut a longer piece. You don't have to cut them this long, it's a little bit of waste, but for the sake of this video I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to cut both ends off. I'm going to twist them so that they're not frayed. I'm going to take one end and I'm going to tin it with the solder. And there should be some solder left on your iron. If there isn't, just get a little more solder. And get some on the end of that wire. It'll make, the, it'll make the solder stick a lot easier when you're working with that very small diameter wire. Now, we've got that wire where we cleared off the edge. And what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm going to twist these wires together. Just like we did with the other one. Then I'm going to take a little bit of solder and run it through the solder. That'll help to solder those two wires together. If there's any of the coating that's still on there and it's not making proper contact, you just melted that off. Whether you can see it or not, I don't know, but the wires are connected. Now I'm going to take the 1 16th, and I'll move it a little quicker here. I'm going to take that 1 16th. I'm going to trim this back a little bit like we did with the other one. I'm going to put my 1 16th shrink wrap over that white wire 
slide it down to where it covers that connection, hold it at an angle, and I'm going to melt that on there, shrink that boot. I'm in the middle channel, and I want to come along the bottom side to the end. Once again, I'm going to take a piece of tape I've got handy and just tape it to hold it where I want it so I don't have an issue later. Piece of tape's just going to hold it there, and as you can see, there's both of my wires coming out through the bottom. And what I'm going to do is just hold them like that, and I'm going to grab this pickup tape. And I always and you'll find this to be a cool thing. I'll always bend apart at the end because this stuff kind of, I don't know, it's a mind meld like Mr. Spock. It just, it sticks to each other. And then you can't find the end and you can't peel it off. Kind of like opening up a roll of scotch tape, but worse. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wind that tape around that coil to protect it. Um, make sure the other tape's underneath. You don't have to take it off. It's not going to hurt anything. And once I get this a couple times around, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the end and make sure it's right in the middle and put it in there. And then I'm once again going to check my work and make sure I didn't pull a wire loose. And we're aiming out pretty darn good. The next thing we're going to do, and I'm moving quickly again, you can stop and pause, but try not to make this video eight hours long. Got the base plate. You'll see the holes. First hole is for a lug. Second hole is going to be the screw that holds it together. But you've got an extra hole on one side, and that's the hole that goes to the wire side. Okay? You've got a keeper and the magnets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put pole pieces in the bobbin. Um, pole pieces basically are those screws. We all know what they are. I'm going to put six of them right there. I'm going to put them in and I'll start the camera when I get that done. Okay, so here we are. What I've done is go ahead and put the bobbins in. And I put the little keeper in as well. We'll put this bobbin in just a hair more. And the next thing to do is lay that bobbin with the wires facing away from you. And we're going to take these magnets and I'm going to put these two magnets with the blue stripe if you can see it, I don't know if you can, there's a blue stripe on them. And when you hold them together, if they, if they attract, they're wrong. Turn it, blue side up, so that they repel each other. They'll stick to the metal keeper and they won't repel each other. That will make that pick up to where, see the red come out? That means south. So the south pole polarity is facing up and you want that on a P90. If you have two, you can reverse wind them or put the next pick up um, going the opposite way, north up. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna take the base plate, the pick up magnets are on there, and what we're going to do is, I'm, I'm going to take these two little wires in the sense of making this a little easier. I'm going to kind of twist them together. Kind of like threading a needle and your eyes get bad. You know, it gets harder to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread those two wires through that hole. As they go through that hole, I can press down and put that base plate on. Okay, my two wires are now sticking out. Now I'm going to get one of the screws that will hold the base plate onto the pickup. And, and the reason I just said I'm going to get one of the screws will be evident in just a second. I'm going to take that screw and put it in that hole and I'm going to drive it in. And that holds the base plate on the bobbin. So it's on there. Now, what we did is we took that little lug and we cut the corners. 
if you remember. And the reason we cut the corners is because with the, oh, the other screw up here, I'm going to pass it through the eyelet so that it's facing up, and I'm going to position it like that and drive the second base plate holding screw in, which is also going to hold that eyelet in place. And this is the way a 50s P90 was done. The new modern bobbins have a hole at either side, and they're easy to work with, and tons of fun, but I'm doing this one like a 50s P90 would be. Um, what you got to do next is put a lead on there. And the lead connects the pickup to your guitar. I'm going to shut the camera off, cut a proper length lead, and I'll be right back. Okay, we've got our gavit lead wire. And we use gavit lead wire on our pickups. We kind of like it. And, you know, you basically push it back. I'm going to push back some of this cloth and trim it off this so that we can have, you know, enough wire to work with. That should give us enough. We push the shielding back and we've pushed the cloth back a little bit. Now this white wire, we're going to connect it to the center wire here. And you'll see that it's short. Shorter than the black wire. Doesn't need to be long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to twist them together just like we did with the other little wires. Then I'm going to take out the old soldering iron. I'm going to put a little bit of solder on it to help it. And I'm not doing the, the greatest job because I'm trying to hurry up and not make this video into a feature length film. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some solder on the end of that to kind of hold that stuff together. And we're not going to put a big glob that's way too much for what we need. So we've got it there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go after some more shrink wrap. Um, this time, what we're going to use is not 1 16th, it's 3 16th. I'm going to cut a short piece, I'm going to slip it over the end, and try to get it to get up onto the black and, and get that white and black wire covered as much as possible, and I'll shrink it down. I'll squeeze the end of it, make sure there's not a lot of excess, which there isn't. And then I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to bend that so that it follows that wire. And that's just the way I do it. And I'm going to bring it and I'm going to put it down inside. And I don't, I'm going to move my hands so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to push the wire down inside that clip. And I'm going to squeeze the ends of that clip together. And what's going to happen there? If I don't get too close to those magnets, right? What's going to happen there is it's going to hold that lead in there. And now you've got your ground wire. I'm going to bring. I'm going to twist it together. I'm going to bring the ground wire along the top, and if it's long enough, I'll insert it underneath those clips. If it's not, I'm just going to take some solder. Let's move those pliers out of the way. I'm going to take some solder on the tip of that solder and iron. Too much coffee this morning. My hands are shaking, I'll tell you. Caffeine rush, right? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to touch it with a little bit of solder. And I'm going to solder the negative, or that black wire, to the lead. A little bit of solder on there, and then I'll go back and put a little more because I don't want it coming off when it's in your guitar. And it's going to fight and not want to stick because there may be something on, like I said, solder goes where solder has been. So if there's not been any solder there, it might fight you a bit. But as you can see, in the end, the ground wires attach. The positive wire is attached, and if we take the ohm meter, with a little luck, we should be able to place the black there, 
and then just touch that tip and if you look at the ohmmeter we have and it's going to be a little higher because it's hot 8.9 so this pickup's going to be around 8.7 for all intent and purposes, the next thing that we do around here, this is, because it has silver pole pieces, this one will be one of our what we call a Stinger Standard pickup. The Pro would have black pole pieces. So we're going to put our little Stinger sticker on there, like that. We'll engrave the name of the pickup once we get going. What I get for going too fast, huh? The sticker give me a hard time? Okay, we're going to flip it over. We're going to take this cover, and we've got this cover kind of tight. Put it on, and we will adjust those pole pieces down to where they need to be. And we're going real fast because it's just a used cover we're using. We're not getting in a hurry just to do anything more than to make this video not five hours long and take three days to upload it here to YouTube. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to drive the pickup pole pieces down in. And we have a P90. Start to finish. Alright, so the next step with this pickup is to wax pot it because you don't want it making a lot of noise. And what we've done, is we've got a saucepan and a Pyrex dish inside. And what we did is we put two spoons face up like that in an X pattern. If you can see them in there. And then we filled the bowl with household paraffin wax. Some folks like to add a little beeswax, 10%, 20% beeswax. You could do it with just paraffin, regular household paraffin wax that you could find at your local department store or what have you. Be careful, wax is hot, it'll burn you. It's flammable. Sometimes the fumes are flammable. Be careful what you're doing. Don't burn yourself. Now, what we're going to do is the wax, we brought it, a little water in the bottom of that pan. And that water's covering, you know, the bottom of the pan and the spoons. As you can see, the spoon down in there, right there. Um, and you set the Pyrex dish on top and let the water boil, kind of like a double boiler, and melt that wax. That's the principle. Now what I'm going to do, see as we've melted the wax and brought it to a boil, I'm going to remove it from the fire, or our little pot plate here. We're going to push the hot plate out of the way and hopefully we can move this pan of wax that's melted where you can see it. We'll have it right in the view. There you go and you can see the spoons down inside and that matte wax is melted so we're good. Now we're going to take our P90 pickup here that we wound. We're going to hold it and we're going to lightly set it down into the wax and you'll see the wax, I don't know if you can see it, the wax is starting to cover and you may see some bubbles coming up. What the bubbles are are the air that's in between the coils and that'll cause microphonics, some squeal and a lot of noise. We're going to check the time and we're going to leave that in there for 10 minutes. At the end of the 10 minutes, we'll simply grab the, the lead, lift it out of the pot, wipe it down, set it off with a paper towel, wipe it all down. And at the end of the day, it's going to cool down. It's a wax potted P90. We did it from start to finish. And I think that not many videos out there will show you the start to finish process. So we hope this video has been helpful to you. I'm sure there's a lot of folks that do it a lot of different ways. What we want to do is show you how we did it for this video. We hope it's been helpful. Visit us online at www.catarbazaar.net. And hey, 
You can buy those pickups as well as a bunch of other cool pickups we wine. It's all bizarre. Have a wonderful day.